Techniques portrayed in this video comply with OSHA 1910.269N and the equipment shown meets or exceeds ASTM standard F855. Whenever preparing for any maintenance on a de-energized line, the first order of business is always temporary grounding. And that begins with laying out all the proper tools. This is best accomplished by using a tarp to keep those loose pieces organized and clean. A tool rack for the long items keeps them high and dry too, as well as within easy reach. Now, starting from the ground up, first the temporary ground rod screws into the soil at least 15 feet from the pole. The spiral threads pull the six-foot copper-clad rod into the earth for full length contact as a low resistance ground. This now makes the bronze T-handle a good attachment point for connecting our first grounding set clamp. To make sure it's tight, a screwdriver may be used through the eye screw. Next, the groundman places safety cones around the ground rod as a warning barrier for other workers and the public. Next, he uncoils the grounding set attached to the rod and prepares to set up the clamp on the free end of the cable. But first, he checks an auto-ranging voltage indicator for operable condition with a separate instrument tester, as must be done prior to every use. Then the lineman tests each phase to make sure the line has been cleared. Notice that the unit is mounted on the hot stick to maintain proper clearance as though the line were energized. Sent back down to the groundman, the auto-ranging voltage indicator is rechecked to confirm that it was operating properly. He again uses a separate tester to activate the auto-ranging voltage indicator. Notice how it sequences through a series of all display ranges, verifying its full functionality. Next, a tubular wire brush mounted on a universal stick thoroughly cleans all conductors. At the places, grounding clamps will go later. This is absolutely essential. It removes oxides and contaminants so the grounding clamps can make good connections. Next, back down below the system neutral, a grounding cluster bar attaches to the pole with a chain binder. A wheel tightener cinches the chain to secure the cluster bar in the best position. Now the free end of the cable attached to the ground rod comes up and is clamped tight on the bar. Then another complete grounding cable set attaches to the cluster bar. With a grip all clamp stick, he connects the other clamp of that set on the system neutral. Now he'll finish connecting the next set from where he had hung it on the neutral in the place he cleaned earlier by wire brushing. This grounding set now bridges from the neutral to an outside phase conductor, always clamping on the area cleaned by wire brushing. Next, he uses a third grounding set to connect the first phase to the center phase.
And finally, he completes the last link by connecting the center phase to the other outside phase conductor. The five grounding sets, from the ground rod to the cluster bar to the neutral and all three phases, now join together in one grounded circuit. With the grounds applied at a pole one span from the worksite, we move to the pole one span away from the worksite in the other direction. He repeats the procedure in the same order here. Again, it's from ground rod to cluster bar to neutral to the three phases. This establishes what's known as dual point grounding. For the worksite, the pole in the middle. Grounding at the worksite begins with a cluster bar. The temporary ground he's installing here at the center pole, the actual worksite, is known as a personal ground. It begins with the pole, which must be considered conductive itself and connects from the cluster bar to one of the phase conductors. The personal ground forms a fault circuit path from the phase down the pole and thereby creates a zone of equalized potential above the cluster bar. Now he's protected to perform the maintenance this service call required, protected by a personal ground here plus dual point grounds at the two adjacent poles. On a system with a neutral too small to carry available fault current, connect one lead from the cluster bar to the neutral and another lead from the cluster bar to the first phase. This alternate setup takes no more leads than the first way shown, with a lead from the cluster bar to the neutral and another from the cluster bar to the phases. Another way to establish an equal potential zone employs single point grounding at the worksite only with leads from a screw ground rod to a cluster bar, the neutral and all three phases. Of course, the very same methods can be applied just as well from an insulated bucket truck. Whether the work is done from the pole or out of an insulated bucket truck, the same dual point or single point method must be used to provide an equal potential zone of protection for the lineman. Whatever your work practices, either the dual point or the single point method establishes an effective personal protective zone for de-energized construction or maintenance work, an equal potential zone with proper temporary grounding. Be sure you are in the equal potential zone. For more technical information and equipment details, refer to the Chance Encyclopedia of Grounding.